All right. So, Lizzie Hale, thank you for being on Live from Antarctica. Well, I think by the time this airs, we would have changed the name of the show three or four times. But that's, we like to confuse ourselves. Well, I appreciate you having me. This is quite the honor. And I just, I love you guys so much. And we've crossed paths for so many years, so many festivals, um, so many red carpet events where I can't help but obviously notice you. <laughs> Couldn't help but smell us, you know. Well, that too. But, you know, that comes with the territory. Um, no, I'm just glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. That's awesome. So where are you, where are you broadcasting from? I am broadcasting from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but I moved to Nashville about eight years ago. Nice little music hub. Um, more, I moved here more on a whim, actually, because all of my parents moved to Florida and I wasn't going to go there. Um, just, you know, too hot. Not a huge music scene, in my opinion. And, and the buses came out of here, out of Nashville, and we moved all our gear to Nashville. So I'm like, well, somebody's got to be near it. <laughs> so... So I uh, planted some roots out here. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I guess the number one thing that's on everybody's mind is like this whole coronavirus and quarantine and shit. So I'm just going to ask you the exact same questions I'm sure you've been asked 20 times already. So how has the coronavirus affected your... No. So have you been able to see your band? Have you been able to you know, get together and rehearse or what? Um, you know, a little bit when before all this went down, we were getting together pretty much every day. We're, we've we're one of the lucky ones. We've actually we had already set aside some time. Uh, well, not this whole time, but the majority of this time that we're home anyway to write an, another record. Um, so before all of this went down and it was just every day was like new bad news, new bad news. We were getting together every single day right here in, in my basement. And um and then slowly but surely, everyone was just like, okay, well, let's stay separate for a while. And we've had some, like, socially distant hangs, like with my bass player and, and, and you know, drummer and just outside situations, like, you know, six feet apart, don't hug, that kind of thing. But other than that, I just, I miss it, man. I miss, uh, I miss playing live shows and I miss jamming with my band. Um, yeah, I, I miss all of that. It's definitely weird. We talked to another... Uh guy uh liam from the cancer bats the other week and they're in canada and he's telling me that they can't see any of their band because they can't cross the lines of the provinces yep so it's just like wow well at least in america we can see each other we just can't tour abroad anytime soon yeah absolutely you know, passports are worthless <laughs> they, they they mean nothing anymore no the irony is that actually my my little brother who's in my band as well he's he's my drummer and he was the last one to actually move to Nashville. So he literally moved in right before the lockdown. So we've never been so close yet so far away. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. Has it affected you uh, creatively in any way? Because, you know, when with this first happened, everyone said, oh, wow, well, in six months, we're going to have like a gajillion new albums. But everyone I talked to was just bummed out. It's different. I think that I had that same attitude to begin with, and, and I have been really busy. Um, it probably actually busier than it than I would have been if everything had stayed normal. Because not only am you know I write uh, am I writing and demoing and and that's become kind of a relay sport in in our band right. Right. Now. So now, so instead of us all getting together and being like, oh, let's jam. It's you know basically. I'll write the song in its in in as much entirety as I can get it. I pass the baton to our guitar player, and then we pass everything to the rhythm section, and then we all like kind of meet in the middle somewhere. So it's it's a lot busier there. But also just because of the lockdown, there's so many people that want to that want to talk that ev that everybody has a show. I have I have a show too, <laughs> you know. And uh, so I don't know. I I, I love I, I love the idea of being busy. But it's just a different animal, you know, especially when you're writing and being creative, you know, lyrics mean something different now. And and you're you're a little disconnect to me. I've always used tour and our live show as an anchor for what I'm talking about or what I'm or the moments that I want to make in a song. So not having that readily available every single night, um, it's just different. You're you're writing from a different headspace. That's absolutely true. 
I, I've I like the fact that I don't have to see my band, even though we're literally in like a dorm kind of situation. We're in a bunker in Antarctica, you know. But yeah, yeah. So we're all across the halls from each other. But you know, when somebody gets up at night to use the bathroom or something, you stay real quiet so they don't like. Hey, Posty, what are you thinking about? You know, like we we try to avoid all that stuff. Yeah. So. No, you don't. You don't want any chit chat. Not 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 these days, especially not in a bunker in Antarctica. That's a. Uh, that sounds like. That'd be the, the, the worst place to be locked in with your friends. Your friends become your enemies. <laughs> yeah. Do you, and do you know where we've been? It's, it's bad stuff. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, at least that uh, the quarantine did yield some cool stuff. You know, we were able to do some things with artists we've never been able to work with before. And uh, I saw that you had a collaboration with uh, Richie Faulkner, Phil Demo, uh, Dave and Mike, and doing Bad Reputation. That was pretty cool. How did that whole thing come about? Thanks, man. No, that was awesome. Um, that was literally Phil Demmel reached out and he's like, hey, I just want to do something. I think that at that point in time, everybody was just missing playing and doing some kind of pseudo jam with somebody. So, so he reached out and then he's like, yeah, I think I, I got Richie on it, too. I'm like, oh, cool. And then all of a sudden, all of the <laughs> everybody else started getting involved. And um, it was a lot of fun. But it was that was, I think the first the first one I, i've done a couple of these you know uh just kind of socially distant jams over the past couple of months and i think that was the first one where i was like okay how how are we doing this you're sending me music and then i'm just i gotta record it but i also gotta video myself so like you're just setting everything up and hoping it doesn't fail <laughs> um but it was fun i love i love thin lizzy obviously you know they're they're legendary and this was this was a song that I had never actually covered before. You know, you'd, I've, you know, covered a couple of the hits and all of that, but for, you know, this, this particular song, it was a, it was new and it was a, a challenge for me. But then there's also like a complete jam at the end, and then they added a new chorus, and so it was just fun. I, I love Richie and I love Phil so much. I feel like they've always treated me like I'm a pseudo little sister in the rock game here. So. Um, it was really nice of them to reach out and ask me to do it. So, and I like singing. So, <laughs> well, it shows. I mean, because that was that just in itself was pretty good. And the first couple videos I saw of you performing live, you know, the first kind of thing I thought was the pipes. Wow, the pipes. You know, so I mean, Thin Lizzy immediately came to mind just because there's such a dynamic range there with old rock. You know, it with with Hailstorm, you're on ten a lot, but I feel like with most people being on 10, that you, you have to be able to play at 15, not 20 to even perform at 10. So I don't think you're from planet Earth. So what planet are you really from? Because humans don't possess abilities like that. You, you, know, you know, it's funny. My, um, I, I'm, I am unlike anybody in my family, so who knows. Uh, but I, I feel like my entire life, it's... I, I feel like I have yet to find a planet <laughs> that that is able to a contain me and all of my weird stuff in my brain, um, but also that just feels like home. So I feel like I've just kind of been floating anyway, you know. And so maybe maybe uh, maybe on one of these adventures, uh, you can help me uh, just stake one out. <laughs> well, we need to find another one because Earth is. Well, I think Ta yeah. the clock is ticking. I'm, I'm done with this one already. I mean, the, I I was already done with this one, but uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 interesting living, living a life, especially. I I've been in this band since I was 13, and so it's so much more than a band to me. It's it's an extension of my personality. It's it's if if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be me. Um, but in that adventure you get to experience every single situation that you do not belong or you're just way too different for anybody that's standing beside you um you're not understood and you have to kind of hold on to that you know with within yourself and use that as your superpower so yeah i i feel like i feel like we need to uh <laughs> i i feel like i've always felt that way and i feel like uh you know, like I said, you and I are gonna have to take a trip, and uh, I'll find I'll, we'll find a planet where we can coexist. I think. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And I'm driving. Yeah, hell yeah, you are. 
I wouldn't have it anyway. I feel like in space, it's different. You almost have to be blasted out of your mind in order to uh, to drive safely. <laughs> well, you're not going to hit anything. You get a pretty good warning when you're when you're going ahead. <laughs> but you know. Where we're from in the deep south, uh, you can only get DUIs after the sun goes down. They they don't give them to you during the daytime. Uh, road sodas. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I I uh, I, I spent most of my young adult life um, in rural Pennsylvania, just like farmland. Uh, this place called Bethel, PA, and it was just you're surrounded by it's either far it, farmers or uh, or Mennonite people, and um, the Mennonite community, and uh, so yeah. We we talked a lot about the road sodas and nobody really cracks down on anything unless it's like a big deal and and, and it's after dark and you're on a highway and you happen to be pulled over. <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of my friends got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It's you know it's strangely enough is how many bullets we dodged growing up because and, you know I didn't realize until we were way late in the game that if you got a DUI you couldn't get into Canada. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I've been really lucky. I've, uh, I, I've, I've saved most of my debauchery, you know, for stage and all of that. Um, I've actually never been arrested, which I really should remedy that before, you know, I hit my forties or something. Uh, I feel like that is like, uh, you know, you never run out of dreams. So maybe, yeah. maybe I should pick a fight with somebody. Well, uh, Randy Blythe got arrested and he didn't like that too much. Yeah. He didn't like that. I, yeah. From his experience, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well you know I, I love their i love their new record they just released a a, a new album lamb of god and they're uh they they got the they got it going on and um i was just talking i was actually just talking to mark morton um the other day and uh and yeah he's it feels like they've like reignited who you know what whatever they've been for the past couple of years i feel like the rest of the world is kind of waking up to them and uh, it's really cool to see. It's really cool to see, like, just the metal community um, shining right now. Yeah, they. Uh, and you you worked with Mark before as well, right? Oh yeah, I um I I was featured on his uh his solo record that he released. A uh, oh, God, it feels like it was only a, f a few months ago, but I feel like it was more than that. <laughs> the time is very blurry, dude. It's like, it, it's, it, I, I can't even tell. I like, it's already what? It's the end of July now. It's like, what happened? It's it, we were, we were in like March just three weeks ago. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what it feels like. It's like this shit. Well, I don't know. It feels like this will never end really. But... Oh yeah. I, and, and it just keeps getting worse. Um, and, Everyone's just trying to figure out, I feel like we're in purgatory a little bit because we don't really have an end game, but we're all trying to figure out how to exist with all of this and exist with, and not just, not just the situation, not just the fact that, you know, I don't think I've been this long without touring and without a live show, without a gig in front of an audience probably in over 15 years this is nuts but not just that but just the impending doom of like every every single day it's new bad news it's you know, shit's happening every single day and it just feels like it's not gonna end so in in that aspect we're all just kind of i don't know like i said we're in purgatory we're just floating until <laughs> until somebody gives us the green light <laughs> which i don't think is actually gonna happen i think we just gonna have to evolve you know I would hope so. I think people are, I mean, it's, I've been getting bad news every day. People are using all their free time to do fraternity tests and I'm getting new calls and letters like every day. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a wage. I don't have a wage to garnish, let alone being able to pay. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to, uh, to payment in, in other ways. I feel like it's, it's not, <laughs> we're well, going to have to start with the bartering system real soon. <laughs> Well, Balsack left one of his kids behind, and you know I didn't want to. I didn't want to pick up the rope there until I realized that I could get him a new social security number, and then you know stepdaddy can get a new line of credit, and that's really cool. That's really that's, cool. That, see, there is a light to the end of the tunnel. You've got to diversify in these trying economic times. Absolutely, but, I, I, that's smart. That's a that's a clever loophole. <laughs> So, you know, when, when we're playing on stage, it's like we're constantly getting attacked. And, you know, it's kind of like 
we have to stack the deck with formidable opponents for our enemies. And uh, watching you guys perform on stage, uh, you have a quite formidable and intimidating presence yourself. So where does where do you get that ferocity? Where do you get the energy come? Where does that come from? Oh man, I I don't even know. I feel like I I had to kind of grow that myself when I was when I was a teenager, um, you know, just in middle school and and in the early you know probably two years in. Um, to us being a band, I had to figure out how to not be terrified of the stage. I was a painfully shy kid, um, wouldn't necessarily raise my hand in school to volunteer to do anything. You know, it's like just didn't want to like screw anything up. And it honestly, it took being in this band and forcing myself to do it every single day uh, to, to really open that up with me. And it's really interesting because what I realized was there is this dichotomy to me whereas there still is a, a a small part of that former self still inside but i've squashed her down so hard <laughs> that that um that i've kind of been over the years i've been reborn as a different character or at least i i maybe not even so much a character but it's it's a better version of myself. It's a version of myself that I wanted to be when I was a teenager and I'm getting to, I'm getting to live that now, um, you know, just from, from practice and from doing that. But I, I used to do this really weird thing when I was uh, probably about 15 in the bars. And uh, I forget who, I forget who, who suggested this. I think it was just somebody that was suggesting it as a joke and I just took it as serious. But somebody told me that instead of looking at the entire audience, instead of being like, oh my God, there's like however many, you know, more than a handful of people there, um, pick out one person and stare them down. And, uh, and so I did that. And this must have been really creepy because I was, like I said, I'm a 15 year old girl in a bar. And at the time when we were playing, you know, and I'm 15, there's like what, maybe 20 people in the bar probably six people in the sound guy if we're really being honest you know so you pick out one person and you stare them down and nine times out of ten because you're the weird one with the microphone they're going to look away so every time that they looked away it was like a staring contest i got a little bit of power and then i would move on and that was a weird task that i ended up taking into now i don't necessarily do that consciously you know but it is still a part of what I do and it's more like a challenge every single night for me being like all right I'm the one up here and I gotta I gotta bring that um and now years and years later um those that has become just a part of who I am and uh and so yeah I don't know it was just this constant evolution of me trying to find my final form <laughs> you gotta keep it interesting that's for sure otherwise you know, or, yeah, or creepy or intimidating, interesting, you know, I'll take any of those. <laughs> I have never done anything creepy on stage ever. Oh, I, I, you are a saint. I've, I've, I've seen the videos. You're extremely respectful. Oh, um, why? Thank you. I thank you. <laughs> um, I, we, I was, I have this, um, I have this fantasy about us touring together. Um, but I, but I feel like no matter what, um, we're just going to have to have a lot of, uh, of plastic wrap and a lot of, or it just ends up the entire set is just one big, just session with just hailstorm, guar mixed together. And we'll just kind of, I I'm no stranger to blood, so it's, it's all good. You know, we can, uh, we can join forces and just make it into a thing. Well, good, because if you if you come out with us or we come out with you, you know, it's like you got to get your hands dirty. We got to do a little bit of killing. It's just like you got to you got to be the one out in the field with the shovel with everybody else to like prove you're one of us. And, you know, every everyone gets their hand dirty so no one can talk. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember uh, specifically there was a well, there's been a couple times 
that I've inadvertently cut my hand on stage, not necessarily on purpose, um, but just uh, it happens. I remember this is like the first time it happened was in like 2005. And oh no, I'm sorry, 2006. And uh, my my hand split open because of something happening with my guitar. There was a puddle on the floor. The uh, the security guys, the back of the security guys' heads were like splattered, unbeknownst to them, which I thought was hilarious because they won't know until you know the next day probably. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's a certain amount. There's a certain amount of power that goes in with that too, as in like okay. I'm able to withstand a lot, and the show will go on. <laughs> exactly. See, if you if you've got blood on stage and you see the uh, the back of the heads of the security guys sprouted with blood, I think you'd be, you'd do just fine with us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that in a little rock and roll. There's yeah. the, you gotta you gotta have some some blood and guts. And obviously, you know how you know all about that. You're the king of that. <laughs> yeah. We we only had to buy six or seven mixing consoles before we realized how to aim. I, I I was just gonna say how many <laughs> how much gear have you gone through because of the uh, the seeping of the blood? <laughs> it's actually actually a lot less than people think. You know, we tr we tend to just put it out towards the audience, and we had uh, I don't know, we had one show where there was where they were bagging up things that were like behind us, and lights were catching on fire because of it, and we just had to kind of stop and tell them it's like we spray we spray blood on them, not on us. Yeah, no. I will get my hands dirty, but not on. There's cameras everywhere on stage, so like, no, 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 no. I don't yeah. participate in the killing there, you know. <laughs> yeah, the too too many too much evidence. Pin it all on Blothar. You got to be careful. <laughs> That's awesome. So, and uh, so you guys, you guys got anything new in the works? Like, what are you working on right now? Are you working on like stuff for yourself or Hailstorm or both? Um, a, a little bit of both. I, I think it's all kind of melded together uh, through this whole experience. But I mean, the task at hand is uh, we're writing for another Hailstorm record. Great. And, and, um, and so, yeah, I get to I get to pour all of my frustration and um, and, you know, anger and attitude and forlornness um, into music, which which is, you know, my advantage i guess because i have that outlet um i've been talking to a lot of people that are not as as fortunate and maybe most of their outlets that were helping them get through whatever darkness you know impends on them um don't necessarily have that right now because of lockdown and all of that and so i know it's affecting a lot of different people i'm i'm lucky to have music um it's still it's still an outlet for me and it's still therapy for me and so i guess yeah like i said i'm lucky in that aspect but uh but i i'm really jealous of there are a couple of my friends um for for instance miss uh, amy lee from evanescence is just like is just finishing up her new record and they're already doing like social distance videos and like ready to release some stuff and i'm like man can i just like fast forward to like the good part like get get rid of the pre-pro all of that just like let's fast forward to when it's already done wake me when it's over <laughs> that's usually what i do it's time travel uh, yeah was, uh, can can you can you help a sister out <laughs> well it's good that you have these outlets and this therapy and stuff you know because it seems like in the music video for vicious the, the killing looked a little uh cathartic there it's like that was something you needed to do Oh, a a absolutely. Um, that was one of the most fun videos that I got to that I got to do. We we had I did a bunch of stunts. There were a bunch of people there that were like showing me how to like fight, which obviously, you know, I didn't I didn't need that much practice. You know, I I I I, I can do my thing. Um, but <laughs> but it was it was it was awesome because the mission was, you know, these guys have kidnapped kidnapped my bandmates. I mean that's no nobody nobody screws with my bandmates but me. Like that's that's the that's the bottom rule. You know, it's it's all good. Like we can they they can get on my last nerve. I can yell at them, but as soon as something happens to them, it's it's no holds barred. And so, yeah, that was a that was awesome. We went through we went through a lot of blood um to get I, I don't I, nothing compared to to you obviously but we went through a lot of blood to get get a lot of those shots and uh 
my the and the the outfit that I was wearing in that video was completely covered and I still have it. It's all dried and crusty and it's awesome. Um, but I kept it all together because you know you want to commemorate the 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 moment and you want to. It's almost like a trophy, you know. Like I I I know what I did. <laughs> yeah, that's what gets most serial killers caught is trying to remember things, keeping little trinkets. That's true. But 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 nobody can find anything in my closet anyway, so. <laughs> I, th I think I th it's pretty safe. <laughs> so, what do you prefer to get the job done? You know, like hands, you know, broken beer bottle, knife, sword, axe, club. Oh, dude. Um, well, I mean, in the spirit, in the spirit of vicious, actually, I'm gonna have to say freaking eight-inch high heels because because these these guys, right? Super sharp on the end, and you can literally walk into the situation and right out of the situation while wearing your weapon. <laughs> Nobody's, no, they, they actually let you through TSA with high heels. <laughs> wow. Great. Um, so yeah, we weapon of choice. Um, I probably would have, I probably would have said ax out of your choices, but, uh, but I feel like that's a little cumbersome and uh, they might, they might actually look in my carry on bag. <laughs> it's, it's a little, it's a little hard to travel with. Yeah, I I was gonna ask you about that. How do you how do you even uh you know how, I mean you have an arsenal of of weapons that you travel with. <laughs> how, a lot of times uh, when we're sit you know before we go in the airport we're figuring out who's gonna pay for the extra over you know overweight bags and stuff like that. We draw <laughs> straws to see who's gonna stick what in their prison purse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Which you know I've uh I've flown with weed up my ass. Uh, to a place where weed was legal, and I had and I had weed at home. You know, it was it was really just for the thrill. I, I was gonna say sometimes you just gotta do stuff to know that you can. Exactly to feel alive, you know. Yeah, and, and uh, have you ever had had a, a situation where if you are carrying the contraband um, in, in in your prison purse, <laughs> which I've actually never heard that before, and I'm gonna end up stealing that. Um, has has uh has the seal ever been broken? Have you had to sit there and just you know ingest whatever you've been carrying? Oh yes, oh yes. Uh yeah, on the way to Australia to do Soundwave, um, I mixed the bags up. One was to go up and one was to go down. And of course, uh, I went up on the fourteen-hour flight. And when I got there, I went down and I peed in all of my gear somehow in the course of the night. And I don't remember. <laughs> It's like what happened. It's like, but you know, moments like that. That's why I don't drink or do drugs anymore. Yeah, no, no obviously you're, you're, you're clean and uh, clean as a whistle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I'm, I, I prefer the term Motley Crew sober. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The, and uh, it, it's kind of like when, uh, when they say it's like British sober, how um, I remember there was a couple artists that are like, oh yeah, I don't drink anymore. But then you would like see them like with a bottle of wine. With like, well, in in Europe that doesn't really count. The beer and wine doesn't count. You're drinking that since you were eight years old. It's just the hard liquor kind of thing. So yeah, loopholes. Loopholes. <laughs> well, hell yeah. Well, I don't want to keep too much of your time, but I just got a couple more questions, kind of off topic. But I see I like gear. You got a lot of gear back there. So, what is like your your go to amplifier of choice? Oh man, I, I've been a I've been a meat and potatoes uh, Gibson and Marshall chick forever. It was kind of like um, it, they they were the two companies that it's kind of like the the date that you're holding out on for prom or whatever. You know, it's just like all right, I'm not gonna take any of these other things because I want to like save myself <laughs> for. Well, not necessarily, you know, not literally, but uh, but for uh, for the Marshall and the Gibson situation, I just I love it, man. It's 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 th this is the gear that my my idols played, um, and honestly, I think that something that isn't talked about a lot in gear is the fact that if you have a piece of gear that makes you feel cool. It makes you feel like a rock star. It makes you feel like you are one of the greats. Yeah, that is almost more important than the sound that comes out of it. Because honestly, you know, 
you can make anything sound like anything with any piece of gear. It's it's all up to you. I, I don't even call it. I don't even call it honing your craft or practicing anymore. You just you make noise until you like the noise you make, you know, and just do that. Do you? But yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I'm I'm very I'm actually like kind of a minimalist when it comes to stage. I you know, I have a um, I have a hundred watt. I, I I just said minimalist, but then I said hundred watt. Hundred watt. Um, Randy Rhodes. Uh, Marshall amplifier um, that I have to uh, face backwards on stage because it's just it's not you know 1982 <laughs> unfortunately and uh, and just blast out the road crew um, but uh, but I use my Gibson guitars I have a couple uh, signature explorers I got some of them back here that I love. Um, as far as my pedal board goes, my favorite pedal is the tuner. It's the automatic make everything sound better pedal. Um, I have a Jerry Cantrell wah um, and a constant rotating situation as far as like s some distortion pedals that I don't use for the majority of my sound. M the majority of my uh, guitar sound just comes from that breakup with the amp. And then I I use either a Klon pedal or I've used like a tube, tube screamer or something of the like, you know, or a an archer pedal i've used the ocd uh pedal as well the zach wild but it but uh just for that sheen <laughs> that nice just crunch on the top of everything um you know a, a little granola if you will <laughs> well that's that's the quintessential rock and roll sound i mean acdc did it best it was just gibson marshall done there it is yeah i, I think a lot of us in the, in the music metal hard rock it's it's overthought very much and it's really just it's so simple it's you have the gear that it inspires you and the less bullshit you put into it the more you actually get out of it oh absolutely I, yeah i've and also you know you you're no stranger to disaster on stage as well i'm all well, oh. you cause most of it but um but you know shit goes wrong all the time so depending if you're solely dependent on uh, and this is just in my opinion, because in my, my guitar player has a pedal board that could probably go to the moon um, if you hooked it up right. Uh, he he he's a gearhead and he loves all the pedals, and and I'm quite the opposite. Um, but in my opinion, and for me personally, I love the fact that if something goes down, I still have the same sound that I would have whether or not you know. It's, it, it, and we and we actually we we don't use any tracks or trickery. We don't. I don't mime. It's just, it's what you see is what you get. It's very, very DIY, very punk rock. And we're, we're, we've always been extremely proud of that. So I don't know. You roll with it, man. You know, that's rock and roll. And, and I, I almost welcome, you know, gear shutting down and I welcome, you know, strange things happening during the set. Cause that's just where, that's where life happens. You have to figure it out. You got to like forces you to it. think on your feet. Absolutely. And plus, from a fan perspective, it's like they get something very unique. You know, you don't get a performance that can be repeated necessarily. Absolutely. How how is your like improv situation on stage? As far as like, do you, do you go out with like kind of a plan, or do you kind of stick to like a like a like what you want to do, or do you just kind of make it up as you go along? Every I go right into yelling at the person who upset me the most during the day, whether it was their fault or not. <laughs> so you know tour manager sound guy it's it's their fault until a couple days later and then you get somebody else hey hey eddie uh push this he feels real bad about yelling at you but you know he's not going to tell you so you get somebody else to do the apologizing for you You can't show any signs of weakness out there or they'll just walk all over oh, you absolutely not absolutely well you know yeah and that that's what i that's what i love about you know being the spearhead of the band and and being the 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 vocalist because I'm like, well, I have the microphone. <laughs> I get the last word every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, the improv part is definitely underrated. I, it, you know, it was probably playing the bands for ten years before I figured out like, you should probably write something down because the minute something goes wrong, you're just like, oh hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Yeah, and then yeah, it could go sideways real fast. Oh, absolutely. Because thirty seconds feels like an eternity up there. Oh. When you're not playing. <laughs> it's like silence. Fill up the silence. Fill it up. Whenever, yeah, when everything goes right, 45 minutes is done in like seven or eight minutes, you know? Oh, yeah. 
T- time is elastic on stage. It 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 means nothing. Um, yeah, no, that's that that's that's cool. That's great to hear with with uh, with you guys. I I don't know. I I like I said. I welcome it. I welcome things going wrong. You know. I I I feel like. Uh, yeah, and we we've made this our mission statement forever too. Where it's like we we do switch it up every night. Well, when when we were remember touring, uh, when we were touring, um, <laughs> uh, you know, we would we'd switch up the set every night because we we we've had a couple of those tours where like we just kind of like all right, we have like the power set and we're gonna stick to that set and it's gonna be this and we know all the moments that we're gonna make, and after a little while it just feels like you're calling it in, you know, and I hate that feeling so. Um, I like I like knowing when I walk on stage that it could either be just the best show ever or it could be a complete and utter train wreck. But that's up to you. <laughs> exactly. All right. It's like beautiful panic. Well, Lizzie, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been all great. Time. Thank you for having me. Let's tour when all this is over. All right. I'm 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 ready to get bloody. I recorded that. I'm holding you to it. Oh yeah, do it. Oh yeah. <laughs>